Have you ever stopped to notice the little details in games? Like the bullet holes that subtly show in a wall after a shootout, or some graffiti tags often found in alleyways. Those details aren't hand painted into the level ahead of time. Instead, they are often applied dynamically using decals. Decals are basically like stickers when it comes to texturing, which means images or textures projected were overlaid onto surfaces to add detail after the base surfaces are already there. So where did this concept come from, and why you should use it if you are not doing that already? You would be surprised to know the origin of this concept, and how long it has been around. Before we continue, let me take a moment and tell you about one of the best software in the industry, Ryzen UV. If you're like me and you are sick of UV mapping your assets, models, characters and environments, then Ryzen UV is gonna be one of the best investments you will make. It not only saves you a ton of time, but also makes the whole process much easier. Ryzen UV offers many outstanding features, like auto stacking, real-time mapping, and the scene outliner for managing multiple meshes. It also offers auto unwrap and packing. In this 2025 version, they offer multiple packing modes, which depending on your needs, can achieve different results. For instance, you can choose between four packing strategies or modes when packing. Efficient, padding perfect, pixel aligned, and pixel art. It serves a slightly different purpose. These packing strategies give you full control over the UV layout, letting you adapt it to any project without wasting time or manual adjustments. Whether it is organization, consistency, or space efficiency, Ryzen UV makes the process smooth and effortless. It saves you a lot of time, especially on bigger projects. And before long, you will wonder how you ever worked without it. So if you are interested, click the link in the description to start using Ryzen UV today. The term decal comes from decalcomania, which originally refers to decorative stickers applied to models or surfaces. You see, in 3D work, decals emerged as a clever solution to kind of a practical problem, which is how do you add localized details without modifying the entire textures or geometry. In the early days of 3D games, I mean the late 90s, hardware was limited, which means you couldn't afford to carve actual holes in a wall that is, every time a bullet hit it. Nor could you swap out huge textures for every little scratch. So game developers needed a lightweight way to stick on effects like bullet holes, blood splatters and graffiti during gameplay. And so, decals were born. One of the first widespread uses of decals was in first-person shooters. If you played classics like Half-Life or Quake 3, you would remember how shooting in the wall could have left a mark. A dark bullet hole graphic that appeared instantly where you aimed, that was actually a decal being spawned on the fly. By the early 2000s, decals had become a commonplace in game engines. For example, the Torque engine used in Traps 2 in 2001 featured real-time decals to project bullet hole textures onto walls. This technique was far cheaper and simpler than modeling actual craters or unique damage for every impact. As game developer Mick West explained back in 2006, a decal is a two-dimensional image of some damage pasted over the surface of the environment geometry, essentially a trick to make the world look responsive without actually altering the 3D world mesh. Once developers had the basic decal, they kept improving the technique. Early decals were flat and sometimes obviously painted on, but game developers got creative to make them more convincing. They introduced normal maps and parallax effects to decals, so that a bullet hole decal, for example, could catch the light and look indented, even though the wall itself wasn't actually dented. By the mid-2000s, techniques like parallax map decals appeared. A developer could render a tiny height map for the bullet hole image, and then use a shader to offset the texture, giving the illusion of depth. Mick West described this for bullet impacts. The flat decal would use a pixel shader trick to give the illusion of depth to a 2D texture, so the bullet holes felt like gouges rather than just black stickers. This was actually a clever hack to meet players' expectations that bullet holes aren't flat, without the cost of actual geometry holes. As hardware and rendering techniques advanced, so did decals. In the 2010s, with the rise of deferring shading, many engines moved to deferred decals, meaning the decals are applied in screen space as a post-process. 
affecting the already rendered scene. This allowed for lots of decals with less performance hit, since the decals didn't have to be its own object lit by the world, but instead could directly modify the frame buffer. Unreal Engine, for instance, introduced a robust deferred decal system. You place a decal actor, represented by a 3D projection box in the level, assign it a material like the decal texture with transparency, and at one time it projects onto the surface within that box. Because the engine writes the decal's color and roughness and normal adjustments into the scene's lighting buffer, it is efficient and can even be used for things like wet spots or burn marks that affect the material properties. But here is the thing. Modern decals can do more than just add a bit of color. They can also modify surface glossiness, normals, etc. Meaning the decal could make an area look wet and slick, or pockmarked with bumpiness. This was actually a big evolution from the simple decals of the 90s. Game developers also experimented with different projection methods. Some engines still use the old school method of actually spawning a tiny mesh and mapping the decal texture on it. This is sometimes called mesh decals or projected geometry decals. Other engines prefer screen space decals where the decal is rendered via shader projection as mentioned. But at the end of the day, both approaches have pros and cons. In fact, one challenge with early decal implementations was actually performance. If you just slapped a bullet hole texture into a whole wall polygon, you would end up retexturing that entire wall each time, which was kinda wasteful. The solution was to algorithmically clip the decal to only the area needed. This way, 10 bullet hole decals didn't mean painting the wall 10 extra times. Tricks like this became part of the evolution, allowing more decals to be added without hitting performance or frame rates. By the late 2010s, decals were everywhere in games, but often still underappreciated. They quietly solve visual problems and make environments richer. Some engines started providing high-level tools for level designers to place decals. Valve's Hammer Editor, for example, which was used on Half-Life and other games, had an apply decal tool specifically for this, and designers could just click on the surface to apply a chosen decal texture, like a poster, scorch mark, etc., and the engine would create a decal entity that projects onto that world. We also saw the emergence of specialized decal workflows in content creation. In level art, for example, in AAA games, it is common to have entire libraries for decal textures, different bullet hole variants for wood, concrete, metal, and various crack patterns, strains, graffiti, labels, you name it. So decals became a key part of the environment art to avoid that repeating texture look and inject storytelling details. But it is not just games. The concept of decals also made its way into film and 3D animation workflows. In offline 3D rendering or movie production, artists might call them projected textures or just use the term decals, but the idea is still the same. You project a detail texture onto a 3D model to add localized detail without altering the whole surface. Visual effects artists also use decals in simulation or compositing. The simulation might produce particle effects as a little geometry chunk, but to add fine detail like the block chart impact mark, an artist could quickly throw a decal texture onto the spot of impact. In compositing, 2D tracking and projection techniques often achieve a similar result. They project bullet hole images onto footage of the wall, which is just a simple example. So decals or projected textures span both real-time and offline projects, which means whatever there is a need for extra detail that is localized, decals are the go-to solution. Another area where decals show up in film and TV production is in virtual production and previous. With game engines like Unreal, the production designers can use the engine's decal system to quickly dress a set. If a director says the alley looks too clean, the artist can drag in some graffiti and dirt decals, I mean in the Unreal Engine, and in an instant, the set will look different, with more character and depth, without remodeling or retexturing the assets. So as you can see, it is pretty cool to realize that a trick invented in the 90s, for game development specifically, has become a standard part of different workflows in 3D, whether it be VFX, animation, virtual production, or anything else. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel 
to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.